Hello everybody, in this video I'll explain how to make a modular replaceable coils for your coil gun. The coil may look like that, or that way, like a bear coil, so you can see how, how it's actually look like from inside. Uh, what you need for that is obviously magnet wire, some epoxy glue, and uh, epoxy glue, long satin epoxy glue, which is important. I use uh, one hour satin epoxy glue from the page company, about in a dollar store, but <laughs> for now I can't actually find any more. Unfortunately, all epoxy comes like a five minutes satin epoxy, which is uh, uh, pretty much short time for winding a coil. Widening these coils took me around half an hour actually. It has uh, 18 layers of uh, 0 0.64 millimeters uh, in diameter uh, magnet wire. Uh, it's around 300 turns in it. Uh, so what I used for that, uh, the main important thing is a uh, self-made uh, winding machine. Here's how I made it. I, I took a long screw I bought in the in Home Depot store. Uh, cut off the head of the screw so uh, this round part can be inserted into the drill. It's actually important during the making, uh, uh, during the process of making this machine. Uh, so how I actually did this part is first two parts coming together and the coil is wound inside there. So this part is made from a screw with the head chopped off and the little trench here to make sure this uh, part will hold very very well in the screw. In this trench I put a nut which was uh, cut uh, on two halves so to put it into the trench where it holds with uh, epoxy glue and there's a washer here the purpose of this nut here is to hold the washer in place to make sure it's uh, fastened very well uh, I aligned uh, that washer to be precisely perpendicular to the screw by putting that, uh, uh, that screw into the drill this, uh, this way uh, and while it was rotating, the first minute uh, setting epoxy was hardening uh, and, uh, uh, and the washer was aligned by fingers to be precisely perpendicular to the surface of the screw. Another part was made uh, of uh, the long nut and the washer also glued it with epoxy glue which is strong enough to stain uh, uh, pretty much uh, big stress. Uh, there's also uh, scotch tape over it. It's not simple because it's transparent. So here's one ring of a scotch tape and another ring of scotch tape here. It protects uh, the epoxy used to wind the coil from uh, getting uh, into the metal because epoxy very good uh, with glue in the metals, so we don't want our coils to uh, stick to the winding machine. That's why the plastic protection is important. Which uh, parts you also need is uh, two paper rings, just from a regular paper, and uh, another part which is uh, paper tape, which I put around uh, this. Uh, uh, middle part. Uh, I, I put a paper around it and uh, hold it with uh, some more um, scotch tape so the paper ring holds like that. What we need is, is for this is actually the insulation rings so this coil was made without us this one was made with it protects the coil from uh, maybe another coil nearby or uh, the metal rings you may want to put on the side of a coil to increase efficiency, right? So I would recommend to use those paper rings on the side of a coil. So here's how I assemble the device for winding. I put one ring here. As you remember, there is a plastic insulation between the rings and the coil, so the paper will stuck to the coil, but uh, the whole coil will not stuck to the machine. 
Uh, to protect the middle part, which is uh, bare metal, I use this ring. It has plastic around it. So it will uh, come with coil. Oh, or maybe without. Well, it depends. If you want the abilities. Uh, and another ring here. So coil will be wound here. To make a distance between between the washer precise I screw the thing here then I measure the distance between the washers and make it precise and when it is I insert the screw here and jam it into the place with the planes to make sure the gap holds uh, without any disturbances, right? During widen there will be some uh, force forcing the uh, washers to go on the sides so you need something uh, st sticking stick in here to make sure the nuts will not rotate and uh, the, uh, the gap will not change. So uh, the next step is to wind the coil in the gap between those washers to fill all this space. So what I have here is a hole going from outside to inside. This is a hole used for first layer so the wire feed into the hole, right? So there's a part of wire sticking out of here. I want it around the, around the stick to make sure uh, the wire is not pulling out from outside, the stick holds here. I actually use some plastic glue to uh, keep it in place. So, as we have wire coming from outside, with the part coming into the hole, out of the hole, and when we wind in, we just rotate the winding machine like that, with hands. Well, I would not recommend uh, you to put it into the drill or some other rotating device because the each turn of wire has to be precisely aligned, uh, bent in a special way. Let me show you how it's actually wound. Here I have a picture. There's one washer, another washer, the stick uh, in the middle, right? Looks close to what you see, right? So, uh, the wire is from fit from outside so it goes from here and the exact way of winding each turn and aligning it is here's a hole from which uh, the end of wire uh, going out of the winding part uh, the first turn uh, uh, is going over the stick and the second turn, in each subsequent turn, has to be aligned to go precisely in the surface of a washer. This is very important. And it has to be bent only in one place, each of those turns. As you can see, there's uh, curves in each turn here. So turn does not go diagonal way. It does not. It goes straight with uh, one bending point. It is very important. Um, the first turn uh, touches this washer. The last turn has a distance, a little distance between washer, uh, some space which is equal to the half of the diameter of a wire. So the second layer, the first turn of second layer goes into that gap. It goes a little bit deeper. So it touches this washer, but the last turn of a second layer does not touch this washer it goes into the line between those turns so each turn of second layer goes be in between turns of previous layer and the last turn does not touch the second washer the first turn does the last one doesn't it has a half uh, of wire diameter distance between those so the third layer actually again as the same way as first layer touches this washer but does not touch this 
so they are like interchanging. Each layer goes, each uh, the turns of each layer goes in between turns of previous layer. That's a point. This way, the coil is wound in the most dense way. As a result, you can see I made two coils here. One uh, like a way I want to use in my coil gun. Another one is uh, just for maybe educational purposes, so you can see. Uh, how it look like inside. As you can see, there's a. Um, you can actually see here that each third layer, like first, third, fifth layer here, sticking out, and second, fourth, sixth, and so on layers are going like a little bit deeper. That's uh, that's actually the result of uh, this winding procedure. And on, from other side, you can see the first, third, fifth, and other layers uh, going into the into the surface, while the uh, the other layers are sticking out, right? So each layer comes like. Let me show you in fingers way. If you did not understood it already, so here's how they go, like that, like this. Or like that. So you don't want the uh, uh, turns like that going right on top of another, because uh, this will take more space rather than if you insert them between, in between. So here, uh, the procedure for winding dense coils. The density of coil affects uh, inductance, uh, and this results in more efficiency uh, in the coil gun because it makes the pulse uh, longer with the same amount of wire and it also increases the force uh, the projectile experiences and here is a holder for a magnet wire I used for winding as you can see the bobbin is hold on the screw which is hold on something I use some table special table and uh, here is the planes which uh, does not allow the bobbin to rotate so I can stretch the wire and keep it during the winding with some uh, pulling force applied this uh, allow me to uh, wind the coil in a very dense way with some pressure included so here we go thanks for watching I hope you will be able to wind uh, the coils like that very nice the same way I did. It will take a long time to probably uh, to get used to this procedure because it's very hard and my hands are painting every every time I want another coil. So it's uh, pretty much pretty much self-destructive way. <laughs> but still, it's probably the best way to land the coils. So I would like to recommend you to try this one, even though it will cost you some, mostly efforts. And I hope you will be able to find the uh, epoxy, long sets in epoxy. I found it's very hard to find. Most of them are 5 minutes epoxy are sold now. So probably those you will need to order through the internet. So during the winding you apply the epoxy. Like you wind the coil and at the same time I hope you have 3 hands to use 2 to wind the coil and the third one to apply epoxy on it. Uh, don't put all the epoxy right into the coil in the very beginning uh, use it little by little this way uh, you will be able to see the wine, uh, that, uh, the wire to see how it's wound to make sure it's precisely wound to align the turns and to bend them I use a plastic stick I made it from a uh, uh, toothbrush and sharpened the end so it's like a sharp like knife but still it won't, uh, it won't damage the wire so it's good for aligning the turns which is uh, one hand I rotate the machine and with another hand I align the turns like that and sometimes apply the epoxy and put it, to, uh, put it into the turns during the winding so I keep uh, the epoxy nearby of me so probably here is it. Thanks for watching.